if you want to own a house, what should you do? Will you buy one from real estate agent or ask someone to design it? Remember, making a house is a natural instinct of all animals. They know how to make it, they know how to maintain it, and actually we did in ancient times. But why did we stop doing this? Because our technology developed too much and everything became too complex to handle, so we always need to ask someone professional. But would you be happy with that? Do they know exactly what you want? Imagine all the people in the world regain our architectural creativity and made better places all by themselves. Is it possible? Yes, I know it. Just by following what we architects do. First, just dream up your ideal future and make it into a detailed plan. Then turn this plan into reality. Then you will get a huge amount of confidence that you can overcome any difficulties and build up your ideal future. Today, I'd like to share a true story of the people who took on the challenge of this architecture creativity to solve a serious problem in their community. It was in 2008 when I first visited Zambia. I learned a beautiful life of people who cultivate their plants and vegetables in their gardens. They dig the soil from the earth and bake it into bricks, then make their own house all by themselves. I was so shocked that here no professional architects are needed because they know how to do it. They have such incredible talents. But at the same time, they had a serious problem. Maternal mortality rate was still so high, more than 40 times higher than that in Japan. The reason was that the lung is too huge and all the clinics were so far from people's home. So many people give birth at home. And in the case of an emergency, it, it took too long to travel. So many could not be saved. Then I was asked by the Japanese NGO Joseph to join a project to build a maternity house where pregnant women could stay for a few weeks before the due date and have a safe delivery with professional nurses and midwives. To save construction costs, we decided to reuse these containers. But for running cost, we still had a problem. Somebody in the community had to take care of it. Usually, when we build such facilities, every process is done by someone outside professional. So community members don't know what's going on. Then when it, it is finished, they get confused. What this building is for? Who's going to take care of it? So to involve community members into the project earlier, I broke down the process into small pieces and asked them to help during these two phases, physical work and painting, which anybody can easily do. They started to work carrying blocks onto the site and decorated container with many leaves from the trees by stamping them colorfully. They really enjoy entire tasks and were always singing and dancing. 
it made more neighbors to come to join our work. Thanks to their contributions, our first maternity house was finished so beautifully that many pregnant women came to stay there. Actually, facility del delivery rate increased from 32.8% to 45% in three years. Then, the next challenge we faced was that Still more and more maternity houses were required, but how to keep up their motivations? So from the second house, I asked them to design a facade of the house to improve their ownership. Of course, nobody has tried designing something like this. So in the beginning, they worried whether or not they could really finish this work. But they did it very well as a team. They tried to find out who is good at which work and supported to each other. Finally, all the drawings were finished and started to promote important messages for the people. For example, here is a husband carrying his wife from home to the maternity house. Or, remember to attend prenatal care four times before delivery. So this house became a beautiful picture book for the people to understand what this building is for. It functions very well because there were still so many people who cannot read in this neighborhood. All the members were so proud of this house and said, this is our baby. We will take care of it. So two houses were finished successfully. Then I started to think about how to hand over the remaining tasks. Planning required special technique. So to give them peace of mind, I invented a playful model kit by which anybody can enjoy planning. And I asked them to make a song, not to forget important points of planning. They really enjoyed the workshop. And at the end, all of them succeeded in bringing out the right plans for the next village. For facilitation, I asked the women who worked on the second house to come to join the third one. They always encouraged the other members by saying, you can do it because we did. So the people who had fear in the beginning started to feel like, oh, I want to be like her too. I want to go to the next village to empower them. This peer support worked really well. So from the fourth house, I left entire process to the local people and just observed from outside. They facilitated well, painted well, and someone came up with creative technique, which we hadn't thought of before. And one day, I heard that someone in another village started to follow this process. They heard about the story of the maternity house and started to renovate this old house. They gathered materials from the other construction site and raised funds as a neighborhood. Then finished their own maternity house all by themselves. So now, this process of making maternity house is no longer something given by outsiders, but is a part of their own culture. So for the sixth house, I just attended at the site for three hours and didn't come until they had finished. 
When I visited there, everything was done perfectly. Then I felt my mission was complete. This diagram shows how we handed over the tasks to the local people during the courses of the construction of six maternity houses. In 2017, I finished handing over whole process to the local people. And now they are still continuing to make more maternity houses every year. So how do they feel now? They said, this is ours, our property, our treasure. We gain, we gain confidence to overcome difficulties. We can achieve our goal when we work hard together. Actually, they already started income generating project to sustain their own maternity houses. As you have seen, architectural creativity is a gift that never disappears and help us overcome difficulties to build up a happier future. It is an unlimited resource which will never dry up, never be consumed, but we continue to inspire more and more people. It's a cycle of empowerment. I wish I could empower more people who still need my help, not only in Zambia or Japan, but also in more places throughout the world. But to, to, to do that, I have to jump into another adventure. I'm scared because I don't want to fail. I don't want to lose, but I hear the voices of my friends in Zambia encouraging me just as I encourage them. Mikiko, just dream up, make a plan, and turn it into reality. You can do it because we did. Don't be afraid, just try, and you will overcome. Thank you very much. ありがとうございました。